this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I hope you all are enjoying the rain here in Portland, Oregon. I took advantage of the gray cooler weather to actually transplant out a number of flowering plants that I had re recently purchased. And that's because it's really optimal, even though it doesn't feel great to be out on a cooler, rainier day, plants transplanted on those overcast days where they get a fresh watering do better. So I don't like to transplant things out on those gorgeous 75 degree sunny days like we had yesterday. Today, 58 and raining, good time to be transplanting out those flowering perennials. I thought I would show you around our trip to Portland Nursery and talk about a few of the things that are available in nurseries right now that I think work really, really well in fruit guilds. So in permaculture, as I'll talk about in a moment, I think that we can kind of um, really overemphasize functionality and forget that beauty is so important. If your garden is beautiful, you want to be out in it. There is no shame in having flowers in your fruit guilds. There's no shame in having beauty be the sole purpose, although you'll find that most of those flowering plants are going to stack functions. So they're going to provide that beauty and appeal for you, the gardener, for your neighbors. They're also going to do things like maybe fix nitrogen. They're maybe going to have a medicinal benefit. They're maybe going to definitely bring in the pollinators. So they're going to provide food for honeybees, for butterflies, for hummingbirds, and for our native pollinate pollinators as well. Those native bees, hoverflies, parasitoid wasps. So i know that a lot of permaculture emphasizes the growing of food and fiber and medicine. It emphasizes how we need to prepare for a post-carbon future. We need to prepare for uncertain times. And I think that that, that um, it can really get pushed to the back burner or maybe even kind of there's a little bit of a stigma against putting those beautiful plants in. And I just want to erase that stigma. I want us to feel comfortable having a garden that we find beautiful and that we enjoy being in. So I want to show you around and, and point out a few of those, those plants that you can put in the garden right now. Some of them I put in my garden this morning that are really, really lovely and also work really well in a permaculture garden. So I'm I'm going to point out just a few of the favorites from my trip. There are many, many others that I have in my garden or you may want in yours, but every plant I feature in the video today is one that I actually have in my garden and I have found works really well in my permaculture design. So hang tight and let me show you around. Okay, we're at Portland Nursery this morning getting a couple of plants, including some blueberries that uh, are replacements for two of my blueberries I lost in the heat wave last year. A mini anemone a new variety of thalictrin that I don't have. And I noticed that they have diorama here, which is Angel's Fishing Rod, also called Fairy Wand. I've been looking for this plant locally for years. Um, it's probably one of my favorite plants and they have it here at Portland Nursery. I've never seen it here before. So if you're interested in growing this plant, it needs full sun and sandy soil, well draining, so you have to amend our clay soil heavily, but they do have it here. It's probably one of the most stunning landscape plants. So I want to take you around with my family today as we walk through the local nursery and talk about some of the plants that are maybe not traditional plants that you think of using in a permaculture guild. They might be more traditionally thought of as cottage garden plants, but they're ones that I really value for their beauty and function. And now is the time of year to go ahead and plant them in your guilds and set them up to support your fruit and nut trees. So first off, I love columbine and I use them everywhere in my garden, particularly next to fruiting shrubs like blueberries or juneberries. When purchasing those perennial flowering plants that add beauty and provide food for pollinators, think about starting with a four inch pot whenever possible. You get so much more bang for your buck. But there are a few instances in which a gallon pot like the scabiosa is preferable because sometimes if you look carefully at the pot, you can see that there might be four or five plants crammed into a gallon pot and therefore it's more economical to go with a gallon. So just check each one, but most of the time the four inch pots are a better deal like this aster here. Asters are a wonderful addition to a sunny spot in a permaculture garden because the native bees love them. 
be aware of how tall these herbaceous flowers get at maturity. For example, hollyhocks in your guild can be five feet tall or more, and you don't want them tangled with the branches of your fruit trees, so think about their placement. I have scabiosa, like the one pictured here, in my pawpaw guilds, a great pollinator attractor and a really pretty flower. So often in permaculture, we can forget the purpose of beauty in the garden and lean too heavily into productivity and functionality. For me, those gorgeous cottage garden plants like this oriental poppy provide that kind of showstopper pop of color and interest and get me out in the garden. And on top of that, like this bee balm here, those cottage garden plants provide food for our pollinators. They serve many roles. Some of those cottage garden flowers, like this lupin, even fix nitrogen. So don't neglect the power of flowers in your permaculture garden. I have found that those cottage garden flowers can really serve an important visual role in the garden early on when our fruit trees are young. They can provide that visual interest and also shade the soil and reduce water loss while our trees are little. They can kind of fill the gap until other elements in our guild mature. Verbena bonariensis is one of the classic cottage garden plants. I think works great at the back of a guild or an ornamental flower border. It's very tall and those beneficial wasps love the blossoms. If you are looking for a drought resistant, lush, low ground cover that will bring in all of the native bees, please think about the catmints and the more ornamental oreganos. Both of them do a great job. Yarrow is another classic medicinal plant that can be used in a fruit guild and butterflies love it. I have yarrow in many places in my garden. It is really good at stabilizing the soil. So thank you for coming with our family to the local plant nursery to take a quick look at some of those plants that are in stock right now that might be considered more of a traditional cottage garden or flower border plant, but actually serve a great role in permaculture design. Let's remember the power of flowers and not discount the role of beauty in our permaculture. It gets us out to connect with our garden. It gets our neighbors interested in permaculture. It brings in the pollinators and many of those blooming plants have additional benefits as well. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll be back from my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden tomorrow.